Hello and welcome. If you want to move people or goods quickly over distances, then doing this by air makes sense. It makes even more sense when you want to be secretive. The first documented aerial smuggling occurred in March 2011 when Italian aviator Antonio Smiroglio crashed while carrying dutiful goods over the Mount Cenas Pass after penetrating the French border. Smuggling by air in the era of American Prohibition was significant in the growth of civil aviation there in the 1920s and 1930s. Rum running from Canada or Mexico was rife. Even the founder of Halliburton and his pilot were arrested for this crime in 1931. Earl Halliburton was caught smuggling 10 cases of liquor from Mexico in his aircraft. Mexican authorities tried in vain to stamp out rum running. Money flooding into Mexico was being used to buy weapons. Times change. Now you can buy alcohol in your supermarket. Aerial smugglers have turned to running illegal drugs. Driving this trade in misery is the insatiable demand for illegal drugs. End users aren't interested in how their drugs get to them or the criminal networks they are supporting. The narco criminals are using common aircraft types, including the Gulfstream 2 business jets, which have a range of over 4,000 miles and can easily cover the 1,500 miles from Colombia to Miami. They can be flown from austere, clandestine airstrips. Hawker HS-125 and BAE-125 aircraft have been around since the early 1960s and are a bit more common than the Gulf Stream. Many are flown from Venezuela or Colombia north to Belize, Guatemala or southern Mexico. Cessna light aircraft such as the 210 Centurion have many more pilots qualified to fly them, making them a popular choice. Still, if you are smuggling drugs, who cares about being certified? Over 6,000 Beechcraft King Air and Super King Air have been built, so there is a good second-hand market for them. These aircraft can take off from rough jungle strips and evade radar by flying low. They may land at the destination isolated strip or just fly low as the contraband is thrown out. There have been 24 Florida companies implicated in selling aircraft to traffickers, knowingly or unknowingly. Delaware, where strict corporate secrecy rules have allowed for the proliferation of shell companies, provides cover for buying and selling drug planes. Most of the aircraft were sold into Venezuela, which has become the aviation wild west. Incredibly, when the United States sells these seized drug planes in public auctions, many of them go to convicted felons. Despite a collapsing economy, near hyperinflation and a refugee crisis that rivals Syria's, Venezuela is home to the sixth largest number of private jets in the world, ahead of China. The world's cocaine is produced almost entirely in Colombia, Peru and Bolivia. The US government has estimated about half of it passes through Venezuela on the way to world markets. The pipeline of drugs corrupts all it touches, be they law enforcement, customs or politicians. The payoffs are just too great and the risks deemed to be small. Air forces have the ability to apprehend and if necessary, shoot down aircraft entering national airspace illegally. Here within Australia, we are not immune to the drug trade. Our coastline is immense, yet authorities are vigilant. Drug seizures reduce supply and that drives prices upwards. That in turn encourages criminals to further efforts to enter this lucrative market. Methylamphetamine is rife with supplies originating mostly from China. 
Police can estimate drug use in various towns by detection in the wastewater treatment plants. China appears not to have a drug problem because the penalty for trafficking over a minimum amount is capital punishment. Heroin, amphetamines, cocaine, cannabis, ecstasy, fentanyl, GBH, ketamine and the hallucinogens are psychoactive drugs causing altered states of consciousness. That may be good if you are an artist or musician or bad if you're flying a plane or driving a car. I'm betting that a user doesn't consider the long-term effects to their health. Consider the case of tobacco use. Smokers dismiss the certainty of lung cancer as something that won't happen to them. As a former health professional, I worry that our children and grandchildren have to deal with exposure to drugs in their social life. I hope they have the courage to say no. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe.